please join us in singing our processional hymn, page 583 in the Catholic Book of Worship, as we gather at your table, page 583. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we start this Holy uh, Tritium with Holy Thursday as we celebrate this coming days, the mysteries of our salvation, where Christ is going into the cross, onto the cross, and into the tomb and resurrection. So we're overjoyed today, and we celebrate this beautiful feast that has three dimensions to it, eh? It has the Eucharist, the charity, and the priesthood. So we begin by placing ourselves before God and bringing ourselves closer as we come before him, confessing our sins with humble hearts, trusting in his mercy and his grace he will pour out in this celebration of mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, 
through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on her peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son, when about to be handed himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb will be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night, 
They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. What shall I return to the Lord? For all is bounty to me. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bond. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of A reading from the second, first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this, is the new this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this 
as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from the world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. But Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe, he returned to the table. Jesus said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You called me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. But if so, your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. The first thing is that uh, I was kind of mixed up a, a little bit in an emotion. I, I had a lot of joy, but I knew Good Friday was coming tomorrow, so I wasn't sure how to experience that. But I think it's a joyful moment to celebrate Holy Thursday because we have this great gift, eh? So, but just a short homily. Looking at the history of Israel, we've seen it in the first reading, the Passover. They went from 
slavery the freedom. Now tonight, Jesus, in these celebrations and mysteries, Jesus passes over. And that's really what the Mass is about. The Passover of Jesus. Jesus passing from death to life. And, it, and this is what we're celebrating. We are still in communion with the Hebrew people, walking along with the Hebrew people forever, who fled from the darkness of Egypt for the goodness of the Promised Land. God became a pillar of fire, remember, to light the way. And it's kind of neat that when it says Judas left and it became night, eh? Judas turned to the darkness. The other disciples stayed in the light of Christ in that time. So tonight, though, instead of the blood of, Christ, of the Lamb on the doorpost, we, as Catholics, we receive the blood of Christ the doorposts of our lips, eh, that protect us from death, going through death to life. And we become a new people, a new people. So we receive this great gift, which is Jesus himself. So becoming one with his sacred humanity, that's what we become, one with his sacred humanity, we enter into communion with his divinity. So St. John is the only evangelist who tells about the washing of the feet, eh? He's the only one. Jesus comes to serve, he said, not to be served. Shows us the way of love. That's who Jesus is. That's what he's showing us today in the gospel. That is the new divine life. He's showing us the way to divine life, is to be servants of this great mystery of life. He teaches his apostles, his first priests, to wash each other's feet, to wash each other's feet, so that we can enter into the divine banquet. You remember when they went into banquets, they had to get their feet washed. So that's what Jesus is doing to his disciples. He's washing their feet to enter into this divine banquet. He does it for us tonight. Even those who don't get their feet washed tonight, it's because that is what it is. We're getting our feet washed to enter the divine banquet, which we celebrate. So like Peter, though, it's always surprised me how hard it is to get people to volunteer to get their feet washed. <laughs> it's always hard. But I think it's because we're a little ashamed. But in a community of love, in the community of Jesus Christ, there is no need for shame. There's no need to shame, right? We wash each other's feet, right? We let wash each other's feet like the master and love one another despite our sins or weaknesses. That is the community of Christ Jesus. And we help one another, washing them away, the sins and, and the, uh, the uh, weaknesses. Because when we serve that way, people start to be built up in faith. For St. John, this event completes the institution of the Eucharist, this washing of the feet. It doesn't stop just here, eh? We receive it, eh? And then we go out and we do whatever we want to our brother or sister. No, this institution of the Eucharist, which is the source and summit, we hear it all the time, of every sacrament that we celebrate. It flows into this and out, every sacrament. And everything we do, we do from this altar that flows in and out, like ebb and flow. Jesus himself becomes food, our life, a prisoner of love in our tabernacles. Wow, eh? I just stole that line from a church father. So. A prisoner of love in our tabernacles. So he promised his covenant is fulfilled now with the washing of the feet. After celebrating the Last Supper, he fulfills it. He loved them to the end. I am with you until the end of the age. There's the two covenants with, that he's present with us, and he leaves his presence with us in the Eucharist. If we only knew 
the treasure to be found in the Eucharist. That is the place where Jesus abides, eh? Like I said, the prisoner, but he abides here. He abides here. Loving us, giving us grace, desiring our company. Ah, eh? Desiring our company. How much good pours into the soul with every holy communion. Every holy communion. He strengthens us. He increases every virtue. So we become a city on a hill, right? For all to see. We become a city. And take their bearings from. People want direction. They want to see a city on the hill, eh? That's who we are, the community of Jesus Christ. We are the city on the hill giving direction, giving direction. They can find their way. If we respond to these abundant graces, the kingdom of God is close at hand. The kingdom of God is close at hand. We will change the course of of our world if we take all this in. So remember, when I'm about to wash the feet of 12 people, participate in it. Allow the Lord to wash over you today. Abide in his peace, eh? So let us, uh, I'll call those who are going to get their feet washed, and I'll ask the servers to help Put the uh, chairs out too. So as we begin this uh, this final part of the Eucharist, day eh, that the Lord has left for us, the service of our brothers and sisters. Please join us in singing As I Have Done For You, page 6 and 7 in the blue booklet, page 6 and 7.
Now, my brothers and sisters, let us stand and we'll bring our intentions before our good Father in heaven. For church leaders, may the Lord continue to conform them even more in the, his heart in humble service of love for his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the greater respect for life throughout the world, from conception through to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose lives have been ravished by religious persecution or violence, may the peace of Christ uplift and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here tonight in this holy place, may the Holy Spirit help us to be always a Eucharistic people to share God's gift of life with the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord who gave us the church on this night, the gift of his priesthood, may bless and strengthen every priest with the gift of deep holiness and pastoral charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in our prayer basket and for those who we may now name. May they be spoken and those that remain in silence in our hearts be granted blessings through our love for Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, that they may have obtained the fullness of joy in God's loving presence in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the gifts you give, especially your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Eucharist. We ask you to increase our faith, hope, and charity as we go through these mysteries of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing our preparation hymn, page 130 in the Celebrating Song, Glory in the Cross, page 130. <laughs>
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the Holy Church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he and the true eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of everlasting sacrifice, and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, as or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their soul, in hope of health and well-being, and paying a homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day, on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake. And in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sictus, Cornelius, 
Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysostom, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flocks of those you have chosen through, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your mo most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to you glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kind countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, and sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offerings of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angels to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son 
may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, we pray, O Lord, all and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in abundant mercy, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Mustelinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our mirrors, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through whom you continue to make all things good, good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with your light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. As one family that is offered to one another, a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to the ends of my room, but only say the word my soul shall be.
Please join us in singing our communion hymn, page 67 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Ubi Caritas, page 67.
please join in singing One Love Released, page 110 in the red, celebrate in song, One Love Released. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now what's going to happen is we'll process through the church with the Blessed Sacrament, and uh, we have an altar repose here, so, uh, and there'll be adoration until 9 o'clock, so we'll go from there, and then we just leave in, in silence after that, so.
please join us in singing Pange Lingua, page 68 in the Catholic Book of Worship, page 68. <laughs> 